Hi, I'm Greg, aka Mr. Greggles. I'm a full-time drum streamer on Twitch, and I'm gonna show you my setup. So this is my OBS setup. It's, well, probably one of the more complicated setups you'd find on Twitch. Most game streamers, music streamers, will have a couple of scenes, maybe one single overlay, one camera. Yeah, I'm way, way past that point now. I have over, in this current setup, over 600 individual scenes within an OBS, which all powers what I do on stream. Anyway, all of these scenes I just scrolled past are to add the effects, like the color changes, the movement, and all of these scenes go to just making 10 individual ones work. So this is like my little control station when I'm setting up the stream. And it usually takes me about an hour to set up the stream with everything, fine tweak stuff, test, and then jump in front of the drum kit. This is where I sit when I'm streaming and I control absolutely everything to do with the stream from either my drum kit or my stream deck or my foot pedals that I have uh, laid out here. So when I'm you know, playing along and drumming, the worst thing ever would be to have to change camera angle and press my stream deck. Whilst I do that for a lot of things, um, which are timed, during the middle of the song where I'm like, oh, overhead cam would look brilliant. Instead of having to, like I say, rotate and turn and hit something, I can physically move my, just, my drumstick to this pad over here, hit that, and that sends a MIDI signal to my PC that is converted into a hotkey into OBS to just change the angle. And it's the same with everything. I've got my foot cam over here, as I said, over cam, overhead cam over here, and on the, the feet, I've got the ride cam, the snare cam, side cam uh, and again a couple of others around here to like go back to the front cam etc so everything's really intuitive i have my laptop over here for mod monitoring chat with all my monitors in front this is the sort of stuff that the stream rarely sees from a camera perspective uh, as i said I have my stream deck here wouldn't be able to run anything without that and my wireless keyboard and mouse, again, allows me to, if there's a tech issue, some, something out, you know, type in chat. But it's quite a compact space. And what people don't realize is this isn't a big room. It is just well-placed camera angles, especially something as such as the bullet time, which pans fully around me. It makes the space look rather large, but it is just a spare bedroom in my house. So yeah, all of my, Parts for my drum kit and the modules are all Roland. I've got the Roland TD50, which is currently their flagship model. It has incredibly high sensing ride cymbal snare drum with static sensors in. I can mute things with my hands, which previously was not able to be done on electronic kits. I have my previous module, which over here, this is the TD30. That's what I ran my drum stream from when I originally started. And then underneath, you can't see it, but there's also a TD9. All three of these modules are linked together to output the MIDI signals to, as I said, control the cameras, as well as provide a multitude of sounds, be it a full cowbell kit or a kit made of goat sounds or just my usual um, drum kit. Again, as well, I've got my sample pads up here. These are, for anybody who doesn't know what a sample pad is, one of these pads can be assigned to any sound you want, be it a, a meme, a YouTube video clip, or a uh, song section. And I use these to almost live DJ whilst I'm drumming, which is something I really enjoy and hope to do more of on the channel. But yeah, that's pretty much a full overview in brief of what I do here. Um, there's a lot more to it. Multitude of cables running everywhere in this room, but it all accumulates together to make something which I think looks pretty damn good. So this is the bullet time setup. There are 12 cameras in total here. They are all Logitech C922s, which for anybody if you're looking to do a multi-camera setup is the perfect webcam 
they have no issue with multiple being um, on the same PC. Now, I built this little holding apparatus, it's supported by three tripods, just with some acrylic tube, really easy to do, but the spacing and the actual diameter of the curve is, is very important for getting the bullet time to look right. Again, all of the C922s are connected by um, all 12 USB 3 extenders, which run into a PC which is dedicated specifically for just the bullet time action. And yeah, the in layman terms, all bullet time is, is multiple cameras pointing at the same subject matter, and it runs through a still image of each one in sequence. Now I can do this in the stream with a command where people type exclamation mark freeze. I can also do one where it's exclamation mark bullet and that will play all the cameras in sequence as well, but with me still moving instead of the freeze frame, which is something that has, um, to my knowledge, never been done live and has definitely never been done on Twitch. So I'm the first person to do this. Logitech kindly provided all the cameras for this project and I am hoping to expand it at a later date to try and go from just a 90 degree setup to 180, possibly if we're ambitious, 360, and do this all live on Twitch. So, I started drumming back when I was 15. Yeah. It wasn't my first musical experience. I tried the cornet, you know, like the smaller version of a trumpet, mm. and then a piano and a bit of guitar before that. Never have really had much luck. I found notated music really hard. Yeah. And I remember my parents were like, well, that's it. It doesn't look like you're gonna be able to play an instrument. And <laughs> I was walking through our music block at school and we, uh, my secondary school was actually a performing arts college. Okay. Which was really cool. So it was big studio and everything it was brilliant. And I just heard some drumming. I was like, Oh, what's this? And I don't know about you, but if you've never actually looked at a person drumming before, and I really like hadn't, you don't notice the drums. Mm. You just think, oh, there's a beat. Yeah. And I, I remember pressing my face up against this window to this semi soundproof room, seeing this guy go mental practicing. I was like, I want to do that. That's uh, actually true. I never thought about that before. I think when I was a kid or I was growing up, you do just think, it's just a, you don't realize it's, it's actually part a of kit. music yeah, yeah like you don't understand that but yeah that's was, really cool it's quite kind of fascinating but i went home to my parents i was like mum dad i want drum lessons and their faces went <laughs> immediate concern because obviously it's any, any parent's nightmare but yeah they my dad was the one who actually found my first electronic kit found out there were electronic kits mm. and and they were like yeah okay as long as you stick at it Mm. Because at that point I'd like been like I can't do piano anymore. And, yeah. Uh, and they bought a piano for that, and my si my sister as well tried playing it. So <laughs> they were a bit wary, but yeah, started and it it stuck. I just became obsessed. Yeah. Like from the moment I had my first lesson. So obviously you've been drumming for a while, um, and you've been streaming for a while on Twitch. And what yeah. kind of Two years, about a week ago, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Congratulations. It's, it's really cool. I know you got partnered recently as well, which is amazing. And, that uh, was, that took a lot of work. Yeah. The the partnership push for any streamer is a hard one. Mm -hmm. I will say, you know, it's it's hard to not get consumed by the numbers, mm -hmm. you know, and the statistics and things. Because yeah. whilst for a partnered streamer, those statistics and things are on show on Twitch, which is a brilliant tool for you when you were trying to get that purple tick mark mm. and you've got to stay above that 75 year average, yeah. it can be yeah, a hard one. So it was a big relief to get that, I yeah. can say. When did Twitch, because before Twitch never allowed music on Twitch, it's always been gaming focus, right? Yeah, so they, I actually came into Twitch before they had a music category. They had all the different game categories. Yeah. They had IRL, which, you know, in real life, which encompassed everything like ASMR so and... probably could have drummed in that section. But. I did quite a bit, actually. Oh, is that where you started? Yeah, the biggest okay. drummer at the time, 8-bit drummer. Yeah. He was actually solidly always in at IRL. And then there was the creative category, 
which a lot of musicians were in and people could we could never decide which to go into mm. because you know there wasn't specifically something for music and it was always a bit like ooh, did twitch actually like this and then they they started to realize that they weren't just a gaming platform they were variety yeah and it's something they're definitely pushing now mm. but they brought out the solely music category along with irl creative okay. and all the games and then <clears throat> It must have been about six months ago. They they did the full breakup of everything. They took IRL, split that down into like the ASMR, um, just chatting, all of those yeah. sections, and then took the creative section and made it into like art, cosplay, etc. And then brought out music and music production. Which I think is a great thing because Twitch is now not just a gaming platform. It's literally a yeah. talent platform. Like whatever talent you have, you can bring it to yeah a load of viewers it's it's, it's like a, a tv station yeah and and there was a lot of i read an article the other day saying that the amount of people that view twitch is almost in comparison to what netflix gets mm. etc which if you think about it is astounding yeah when it's it's people not putting on produced shows it's just showcasing as you say yeah. their talent on themselves yeah it's literally just a guy or a girl in their house <laughs> well, in their, probably in their bedroom or whatever just doing something yeah. like playing a game or just talking to the camera and i think it's great and i guess that's where you started obviously you didn't have all this equipment when you first oh, no. began you had to kind of invest your own money your own time yeah. to grow that and Big get a bigger drum time. kit get more cameras get more lighting and so the, the way I started on Twitch was I'd, there was a group of friends I had and we were gamers, you know, play together every night sort of thing. Mm. And one of my friends, he was like, I'm going to start this Twitch thing. Do you guys want to jump on with us? Let's make it like a mini team. So we did. And I must have done that for about a month and a half. Didn't have a single view the whole time I was mm. doing it. And I, I tried, you know, it was like, oh, well, stick to a schedule and stuff because I like video production. I was like, oh, this is right up my street. Never got anywhere. And it got a bit disheartening, you know? Because mm. um, I found it hard to concentrate on like the chat and the gaming at the same time. So it took away from the game, but it, no one was viewing me. So I wasn't really getting anything out of the experience. And then the same guy who started up the team went to me, was like, Greg, <laughs> you drum. Why don't, you know, you're a session drummer and you've been doing that for years. Why not drum on Twitch? I was like, eh. I don't think anybody would watch it. And he then mm. showed me, you know, the 8-bit drummer, who's like one of my biggest inspirations to go on to Twitch mm. with the drumming. He was like, look at this guy. He's got hundreds of people watching. I was like, ah, yeah, yeah. okay, I'll try it. And I set up a, a single Logitech C270 webcam and my drum kit with like, the sound was only going through the right channel on <laughs> headphones because I couldn't get mono sound and hit <laughs> things. It was brilliant. And I had 17 viewers, Yeah. you know, the first stream, so. That's great. Obviously, I know this, but these guys probably don't know, but when you're drumming, it calms down your Tourette's. You've got Tourette's, and yeah. I think it's fascinating to think that music or just beats can help you sort of control it. Yeah, I mean, it's like now, I, I've, I've ticked a couple of times, I've had a couple of twitches and things, but compared to what it can be like, mm. um, especially when around other people with Tourette's where it really can explode, you know, you wouldn't really tell I have it. Mm. And the, that does stem from the drumming and the drumming was, well, one of the reasons I got so obsessed with it was the moment I sit down in front of my drum kit, it's gone, you know, no symptoms. And the way I'm controlling it now is I'm not holding it in. Suppression is the word for that within the Tourette's community and it's genuinely seen as a bad thing because with Tourette's it's a bit like the more you hold them in you fill up a bag and eventually the bag overflows and they all come out at once. Okay. And where, what I do is I just imagine I'm drumming. It's taken about eight years to get to that point of being able to do it but by imagining that I'm playing my favourite tune, uh, like I'm imagining Smells Like Teen Spirit at mm -hmm. the moment, it gives the the same effect yeah and i can be in public and, and do stuff like this and not have to worry about shouting <laughs> profanities or, or yeah. anything like that which yeah it's and it, it marries over onto the twitch mm. side the fact that i know i can stream and 
people see me and not the Tourette's. Yeah. It's really, really nice. That's really cool. <laughs> when I was first diagnosed, you're afraid. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're really afraid of, of what could come out, what's gonna happen. And to answer your question in regards to embarrassing stuff, if I was to start on the amount of times that I've I've been put in situations where people have either turned violent, been aggressive, or it's been embarrassing, we'd be here for the rest of the week. Mm. I mean, it's it's common. Oh yeah. Which is a shame. And as like me, if someone just swore at me, I would probably be like, "What the hell, man?" Yeah. But there's nothing that sort of shows that you have Tourette's. Like it's not like you get this reflex though, um, of say something happens. Anybody with Tourette's gets to the point where they they know immediately to turn around and go, oh, I'm really sorry, I've got Tourette's, to diffuse that immediate, what, like yeah. anger that people get. And I mean, I've been on multiple BBC documentaries now, raising awareness for the condition uh, since the age of eight. Mm. And that's genuinely helped. You know, I've seen the impact of those quite literally globally. Yeah. So from, if you compare when I was eight and I would shout something and it, parent to turn around and go oh, stop that or you're being badly behaved and I would go I've got Tourette's and they go I don't know what that is to mm -hmm. now where if I'm walking down the street and I shout something and someone goes hey I go sorry I've got Tourette's they go oh oh no worries they know what it is and yeah. they carry on with their day and everything's fine you know mm. in my lifetime and because of the work I've done there is a big transition has been made and again it's on the digital side of things with twitch and the internet it's that has changed as well the views of people um yeah. so when i young when i was younger yes i'd get embarrassed about things and now after i've been dealing with the condition since the age of five so yeah after you know 20 years of it you get almost used to it i guess yeah like how it, to deal with certain situations if or... someone gets violent or if someone gets over exuberant in their reaction you just learn to to be like well i'm sorry and remove yourself yeah. and embarrassment wise you get to the, the the single standpoint of i can't help it so as long as i am always explaining myself correctly then whatever their reaction i know i've done my part yeah, yeah that's great and obviously at twitchcon we were both there yeah um, that was brilliant that was my first twitchcon oh was it I didn't yeah know that. that's amazing. absolutely adored it. it was awesome uh, i had a good time in germany um obviously i introduced you to sweet anita yeah and she's got tourette's as well um and i think it was nice to sort of i don't know just make a connection there because i think it's probably good for you to have someone to talk to who also has Tourette's. yeah especially um, someone else on twitch because mm. there are not many people on twitch with tourette's like aside from anita there's Nerendipity, who i spent a lot of time with at twitchcon and before meeting the people that Anita knows, mm. I wasn't aware of anyone else. You know, was, I thought there was only us three. Yeah. Um, so it's quite a, quite yeah, it was, it was good to meet her. And we've, you know, we've chatted a lot since mm. and things and. Actually, yeah, you've joined her streams as well. With yeah. Mental Health Mondays and stuff like that. Yeah, so. again, I, the work she does is fantastic mm. to, to raise awareness, but also just make it commonplace, yeah. which, you know, it's not something that is out of the ordinary. Yeah. Which is good. So yeah, obviously when people watch the stream, literally anyone watching can request any song and you will play it. Yeah. I have one question. How do you play a song that you don't know? <laughs> like, it seems ridiculous. <coughs> like, I, can't, I just can't imagine you can do, I know you can do it, but it's like some sort of magical skill. It's, it's a very hard thing to explain, but think of it this way. If you go on a drive on a road you've never been on, mm. you sort of have this weird sense of where the road's going to go before you actually drive it, don't you? Mm. And you don't crash, you drive the road normally at a reasonable speed and you get to your destination. Yeah. And you think, oh, I've driven that road. It's sort of the same with the, the drumming. When you've been drumming for so long, because I'm to say you've been driving for a couple of years, you get to understand and predict things from what you are hearing. So usually when, say you were to give me a song I've never heard before, which is 90% of my stream, I will listen to the first couple of bars of the drum beat. And from that, I can usually get the whole song. 
mm. which sounds weird, but in most pop music, it's just a repeating pattern for the drums. So once you've heard that, those couple of bars, and you, I've got it, that's mm. the rest of the song. I can improvise my own stuff over it, you know, show off a bit, add some cooler fills and things, because obviously it's a drum stream, I've got to do that. Yeah. But, yeah, you, it's a weird sort of musical sixth sense, but it's, it's from years of playing multiple, multiple different styles, different drum beats, learning those drum beats. So the moment I hear one, I can just go, that's that, pull it from my mental library, and, and, and go. So it isn't magic, then it is literally years and years of practicing, yeah. essentially. Yeah. That is incredible. It's, it's quite fun, mm. though. The amount of music I'm exposed to yeah. and have experienced, you know, there's new genres I've been put onto because of my Twitch mm. um, experience with drumming. So yeah. it's it's cool as well when there is a song that I can't get. Mm. I go, but I've never heard that beat before, and I learn it on a stream. Yeah. So there's it's never boring. That's cool. So obviously, when your your viewers are watching you on Twitch, um, they get different angles. It's not yeah. just like what it was a few years ago when you first started, it's not just that single camera. It's now Thankfully. literally like a production studio in one room and they can see your, your face and your drum kit in different, different yeah. angles, which is great. It's, it's taken a while to build that up, mm. but I am, to my knowledge, the only person with 20 cameras mm. on Twitch, which is quite nice, I guess. But the, the main thing that I give power to the chat for is the ability to choose what they watch yeah um angle wise so it's really good when i'm like someone asks me a question i'm teaching etc or i'm playing a song that's really complicated and hard and then with the the new bullet time setup that i brought in which is again unique on the platform no one else yeah, has that. i've never seen it the only time i've seen it is in the matrix which yeah <laughs> which is uh, different because that's i guess that's done that's edited in a way, whereas you are actually doing it live on stream, yeah, uh, which it, is crazy. It took a lot of initial working out, but the the setup after I got the cameras from Logitech, it was relatively easy. But mm. it, I really like the effect it gives. So, what what do you like about the noble chairs um, when you're drumming? The so the one main thing about the one that you gave me mm. is the back support. Yeah. The fact that I'm I'm constantly stopped from slouching, you know, it's it's got the lumbar uh, cushions, etc., which is brilliant as well. Just the a lot of chairs when you height adjust lock to certain specific heights. Yeah. With the noble chair, I was able to adjust it to exactly where I wanted it, which is brilliant for when I'm doing stuff with my legs with the pedals. Yeah. And then just the actual comfort of the seat. You know, sitting in a chair for prolonged periods of time in an office is nothing like sitting in a chair for 12 hours drumming. Mm -hmm. And I tell you what, if it hadn't have been for that chair, uh, I wouldn't have been able to sit down for even, you know, six hours. Yeah. So it, yeah, they're incredible. And the build quality as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I never felt I was going to move around and break it, um, et cetera. So, yeah, just absolutely perfect. That's awesome to hear. And do you think you can drum on a noble chair? Oh yeah, most definitely. I mean, like actually drum on oh. a noble chair. Oh yes, you can. I probably could. Yeah. Should we do it now? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> 